Welcome back to Squawk Box. As we've been discussing all morning, Erin is waiting for tonight's non-farm payrolls number from the states. But what are the commodity sector going to do ahead of that data? Let's take a look at some of the major players for you. NYMEX, light sweet crude have pulled back just a fraction in the overnight session, but it has been fairly strong lately and it's still holding above 82 US dollars a barrel. As for gold, the safety play, if you want to have a foot in that safe camp, you can see uh, this has been uh, pushing higher, 1,194 US an ounce. And as for copper, the growth story, this is a look at how spot prices are, 7,395, down about one and a quarter percent. Let's get the latest with Jonathan Barrett, who is Managing Director of Commodity Broking Services. He's in our CD studios this morning. Um, Jono, how are you positioning ahead of tonight's numbers? Karen, it's going to be a little bit nervous. I'm going to be a little bit nervous. I think the market wanted, wanted to see good numbers, and whether or not they get it's going to be another thing. And I think the concern that we've got for commodities is, is this recovery stalling? And I think, to me, that's going to dictate the mood for a lot of commodity players uh, over the next couple of weeks. Jono, how do you play the bull run that we're seeing in wheat prices? I mean, clearly the obvious route is a pure play agribusiness companies like mm. Bungay and ADM. But I was doing a little bit of research and there are some pretty whimsically named ETFs. The yeah. COW, the Claymore Global Agricultural yeah. ETF, <laughs> TSX listed, yeah. and Moo, even, Market Vectors Agribusiness ETF. Uh, are they good choices yeah. to make good investment vehicles? Sh surround, uh, <laughs> I first of all like to say, if you are looking at the wheat market, just it is very cautious. We had a limit move up last night. There's a lot of people who are caught short on there, and there's a lot of new buying coming into the market. Um, there are quite a lot of programs. Yes, the ETFs are pretty good. Uh, there are just wheat ETFs certainly traded out of, Amer out of America and also out of London. And that's for those that just purely want, um, want ETF exposure and not trading the CFD or the futures. But, but I think, Sheree, I think people have got to look at this rally. Um, you know, it's, it's, we still have world ending stocks on 20 year highs. So I don't know whether or how sustainable it can actually be. Johnny, you also point out the long term picture because typically we look at the likes of oil and say what's it going to mean for uh, you know, soft commodities, but you're looking at soft commodities as a potential inflation story in its own right. Hmm. Yeah, look, we are. Um, when, you, when you look at just the, uh, the softs um, and you look at the increases we've had across the board, and, and you look at them, and some of them on two weeks high, uh, two month highs, um, you know, 22 month high for wheat, you know, rice starting to move up. You do have that potential that these high prices have to feed through the economy. And as a result of that, those economies that have inflation concerns, like in Australia, we're at the top end of that band, this will feed right into it. And as a result of that, I think you'll find we could get through a tightening process, uh, recommencing. So I think it's going to be really interesting. It is lag, but it's something we've got to keep in the back of our mind. Does that, does that argue even more for gold, uh, John? 100%. Yeah, no problems there whatsoever. Um, we sort of looked at gold, and I think I'd be moving back into gold for quite a few reasons. One, that inflationary pay that people would expect. Two, we're coming into some seasonal buying leading into Christmas, um, and it just sort of feels that gold's ready to head back through that 12, uh, 20 level, right. and maybe yeah. a little bit higher if that inflation kicks Donald, on. But can't you argue that uh, the other precious metals in the family are outperforming gold? Platinum and palladium, for example. Yep. Isn't your money better spent investing in those uh, commodities? since gold seems to be a very crowded trade, arguably. Well, look, it has been, and that move down to 1160 got a lot of people out. Um, a lot of people were nervous. Uh, they got out of it. The wheat longs are out. The whites, you are 100% correct, but people moved to the whites, the palladium and the platinums, for the economic recovery story, and that's what we've seen. So, so if anything, that perhaps has got a little bit more limited upside, or more upside if the economy comes up or continues, the recovery continues, but less if it stalls. And if it does start to stall and we get a little bit of inflation, then I feel that that gold has got a little bit more to run. Um, Jono, one story that was during the rounds yesterday was the stress testing in the Chinese market about property, if there could be a 60% drop, what that was going to mean for the sector. And that seemed to impact the commodity markets as well, the risk-off sentiment. What did you make of it? Well, when I looked at that, I also looked at the, the other side of it, Karen, and that was where the Chinese are releasing or losing a little bit more control on the gold market. So I think if you have concern in the property, the property sector is a concern over there, but it's controlled. And I think they will control it. 
but by loosening restrictions on people and how they can trade gold, people might turn around and say, hey, I'm going to get out of the property market and I might move into gold. So that in itself might give it a little bit more of a push. Okay. John, just back to wheat very finally, because uh, one of the big beneficiaries yeah. are clearly going to be uh, countries like Canada and, of course, uh, the farmers in your neck of the woods, in Australia. So you would have <laughs> thought that the uh, alliance between AWB and Grain Corp is mm. at a very timely uh, 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 juncture right now when you look at the market. Oh, Sheree, it, it, look, it, it, I was just up north um, just during the week. And um, there's a lot of smiles on a lot of faces. A lot of farmers had stock um, in silos on farm. They're getting some very, very good prices for it. Um, you know, I think the tie-up between AWB and Grain Corp will be good because it allows the industry to be able to take stock and do more with it. So it's, it's all interesting, the players at the moment. But, but the prices we've got at the moment, I think, will uh, relieve a lot of pressure from a lot of the farmers because they're getting some good prices. Okay. Listen, John, it's always useful talking to you, sir. Thank you for your time. John Barrett uh, there, live from down in Sydney.